In this video, I will share with you how to make powerful decisions to create magical life for 6'2 human design profile like me. So I am 6'2 lion profile and I will share my experiences, my understanding and my intuitive understandings of how 6'2 work and how it is different from what most people understand with 6'2 lions and how it is actually more empowering, more powerful. So first things first, the best decisions need to be made precisely and reasonably fast. And precise decisions come from being heart aligned. And I'm saying heart aligned because it actually requires complete coherence and um, alignment within, that means mind, body, heart, and soul, if you go that direction as well. But the reason why it says heart align is because most people think from their head and don't listen neither to their body, neither to heart. And if because heart is in the center, heart is in connection with both body, because body feels, so the heart feels through the body, and also to the mind, because mind creates feelings, so heart is always in the middle between mind and heart, and heart-centered decisions is that what makes you most successful and delivers you the life that you want because you make the right decisions faster and don't make the wrong decisions, therefore you get there faster. It doesn't mean that... And sometimes the best decision is to make a mistake so you learn from it in the fastest possible way so you never repeat it again in life. So it doesn't mean that you will never fail, it means that you will get what you want in the fastest possible way if you follow guidance in this video. And of course your own intuition and best judgment. I never really take whatever I say without any judgment or critical thinking. Do follow your intuition. I'm just here to share my experience, my understanding, what you do with it, what you take with it. You always have to follow your own insights. So first things, uh, so, no, first things again is, so line six. So how do line six actually make decisions? And we all make decisions based on our desires. Desires is what makes us move. And of course, desires is what makes us lean towards one option more than other. So it's very important to understand desires and core desires of line six. And the core desire throughout the whole life of the line six is being a role model. And sometimes you will uh, li uh, read and learn that there are stages in line sixes, like the first 30 years, next 20, and then so on, so on. And I would say, don't bother about that. That's not important because the desire to have integrity to be a role model is from day one, once you're born, and it's there the whole life. Yes, you might not be in a position where to express it fully uh, in terms of society and being in a position like a leadership position. That doesn't matter because the core desire to be a role model has nothing to do with anyone actually following you because being a role model means me standing in integrity with myself and doing the things I said I will do. So role model is I'm doing what I said I will do even when no one is watching. And that means core integrity for me as a role model. So I'm role model to myself and maybe others if they, if they wish to watch me or wish to take advice from me or any shape and form they want to follow my path. And how do I become role model? By role modeling myself and being the person I say, say I am 24-7. So that's the core desire, to stay with integrity with who I say I am, who I said I will be, and that's the core desire. And sometimes people confuse it because they think, I need to have followers, I need to have people listening to me, I need to push myself in leadership positions. Well, that's not a core desire. Core desire is to stay in integrity. And once you realize the core desire, you can take everything else that's not core away and not put it as an important thing in your decision making when really it's probably not. It doesn't mean that you don't have to go for those leadership positions. It just says, be really open and feel in your heart, is that what you really want or you do it because you feel that you need it to prove yourself in a position because you're not integrity with yourself. 
So that's the key distinction here. Because the key desire is to be integrity with myself regardless of what's happening on the outside. That means claiming my whole power and being completely accountable for each thought, word, action and emotion I express and also observe within me and what do I do with it. So that's the core, core, core desire. Everything else is secondary. It's also maybe important many of the times, however it doesn't it's very important to keep it in mind when making very important decisions in life to understand what are the desire behind my decision and what do I want, why do I want it, and how do I get there the fastest way possible. What do I want? Why do I want it? Why do I want? Because it comes back to realize, is it really what I want? It kind of challenges the what do I want. Is it really what I want? Yes. Why do I want it? Because I want that. Ah, is it really still want to get, get me there? Like, will that get me there? Oh, okay. What do I want? Why do I want it? Will that get me there? How it will get there faster? Once you realize, kind of change, uh, forces you to go through this cycle of what do I want? What, how, how it will look like when I get it? How do I get there? As you ask, how do I get there? Where is it going to be? So what do I want? Where am I? Uh, what do I want? What's not here right now? How is it going to look like there? Why do I want it? What's going to motivate me there? And once you know the desire, why do I want it? What's the desire behind it? You realize and get more understanding what is it that you want. Because as you understand why do I want it, you get more clarity on what is it that you want and also how to get there faster way. So the, always the middle path is middle heart. Why do I want it? For example, let's say I want to practice yoga. Why do I want it? It just feels good. That's it. Like, I don't need to have more explanations, more reasons. Yes, there's a health, there's, uh, there's more flexibility, strength and uh, spirituality and all kinds of reasons for practicing and doing yoga. But when I'm, if I'm honest with myself, then I do it because it feels good and is the right thing for me to do. And I said I will do it because it's good for me. And because it's good for me and feels good, I will do it even though there are times when I don't feel like it's feeling good for me to start it. When I know the fact that each and every single time I started wherever I started, I finished better than I started from. So making doing yoga is makes me feel good, makes me feel better. So that's a fact. And because I know it's a fact, I'm going to do it because I feel good doing it. Not always doing it, doing it whole practice will be make me feel good. Maybe even first half an hour not going to be that good, but I will feel better regardless of all these things. So why do I want it? Feels good. Okay, let me do it. So that's line six in nutshell. To recap, it's core desire for line six is staying, being a role model and claiming my own power and being role model for myself, not for others, for myself. Because role model means who am I when nobody is watching? And when nobody is watching, that I cannot be model to anyone else except me. When no one's watching, I'm the only one judging me. And how I judge myself is how I appear to other people when others are watching. So remember, role model for myself, in staying in integrity with myself. So let's go to line two, which is also part of line six, because like, often they say that line six is combination with two and three, and when you combine two and three, you get six. So line two specifically is, core desire of line two is mastery. So sometimes there are these misconceptions, what does it mean to be line two? So I want to be very clear here. The core desire is mastery of a craft or skill. So some kind of mastery. And how do you become master? By practicing it and teaching it. So there are two, uh, two aspects for the fastest and most efficient level of mastery. So sometimes they say that, you will read that quite often, that as a uh, line two, you need to go away, you kind of need to hide away, you need to be in a cave and all the things. No, that's not the need of a master. Need of a master is to master and practice a skill and share it and teach it. 
there's no need to be alone while doing it unless unless there are certain conditions certain circumstances when you need to be alone to master it or you feel that you are unable to master it being with other people which may or may not be truth because sometimes let's say let's go to my past uh, i was a yoga teacher in my past uh, life before i became dream accelerator and help people to accelerate their dreams and get there faster so as a yoga teacher my core desire is to practice yoga and become better at it that's it how do i fulfill that desire many ways i can do it on my own i can go to the yoga studio i can attend classes i can also teach class and practice in classes but to fully 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 be a practice uh, develop a skill as yoga practitioner i have to be fully in a practice that means i cannot teach at the same time and quite often yoga teachers they have this practice where they pass demonstrate partly demonstrate and partly that that's what exactly what i did partly demonstrate and partly adjust and help people to get into positions and kind of help them understand and feel their bodies basically and if I'm teaching always, then I'm not get fulfilling the mastery desire. If I'm always mastery but never teaching, I'm never fulfilling the teaching part because I'm never testing my mastery. Because teaching is the best way to understand how much to actually understand, how deeply understand. Because then I reflect, then I know the feedback and how good am I in not only embodying but also explaining it and showing it. Because I can do it perfectly. But do I really know what I'm doing it? Am I really that conscious of what I'm doing it? Until I express it, until I try to teach it, I'm not really fully conscious of it. So these are two core desires of mine too. And being alone is none of them. It's not, nothing to do with being alone here. So yes, if you introvert, if you identify with yourself being introvert, yes, you might have a desire to be alone. Fair enough. But it's not related to line two. Line 2 doesn't require you to be alone. It actually says that you need to be a good master of the skill. You need to master the skill. You have to express the desire to master the skill. And you also will be wanting to express and teach that skill to others to show it. And so that you can learn even better. Because that's the path to the master. Because you may not want to actually teach it. But... You kind of will want it as soon as you realize that teaching actually improves your skill and that's the best path to improve it in the first place. So you eventually you will get desire to teach, to close the loop and be a better master, to feed the original skill of being a master. So then, of course, it's dealing with all the maybe limiting beliefs, which says, I don't want to teach it, I'm not good enough, and all these things that come up, which says uh, that that is counteracting in opposite direction that... I don't want to teach it's not for me so basically there's limit limiting beliefs and oppos opposing forces opposing um, desires and to push you in opposing directions one says i want to teach other ones no no no, i'm not ready yet and all these things but once you recognize the core desire is i want to be master and teaching is path of mastery you can realize what is truth for you and release the limiting belief so you go in direction on a truth with least resistance which is the most hard line, most efficient, and most flow-based way how to make decisions. It's just faster, easier, and fun and flow-based way. So, this is for line two. And I believe this is a good place where to stop and... stop and kind of reassess that, yes... If you align 6 2, then your first desire is to be a role model for yourself and be your best self even when no one's watching and all the other things are less important and be has to be considered as desires till they become to the truth and as a line 2, you want to become a master, your best version. You always want to be growing. So that's another thing about master. You always want to be growing. You always want to be person who's always in continuous mastery because as soon as you say i'm done growing i have mastered the skill you're no longer master because you said i mastered it that means there's no more growth and where there's no more growth 
there's no more mastery. You're not fulfilling the core desire of being on a path of mastery because there is no upper limit to your mastery. So to continuously fulfill desire, you need to be continuously mastering the skill, continuously growing, continuously improving in one shape and form. Okay, as we become older and more experienced, then certain people have certain changes in their bodies, which may or may not happen sooner or later, but environment changes, body changes over time uh, or not, but these, uh, all kinds of things may happen. What I'm trying to get there is you need to adapt. Sometimes your growth may not be always physical. Let's say that you have an injury, very simple, without going into the discussion about if aging is real or not and how real it is, how much it's actually accelerated by beliefs or imposed by beliefs. Let's go, there's an injury. When there's an injury, and if it's a physical practice like yoga, it may seem that I am unable to practice and grow my mastery of yoga, which is not true. Yes, you're kind of limited in growing in physical level, but you can still grow in heart level, mind level, mental imagination, practical mental rehearsal, spiritual growth, and exploring different parts of body, exploring different modalities, different types of yoga. Let's say there's an injury on your leg, well, your upper body is still available for so many movements. So you can still do even chair yoga. So you still grow in exploring the discipline of yoga. Let's say that's your main discipline, uh, which you cho have chosen to master. So, so the, once we realize that, it's easier to make decisions because you know your core desires and you're always searching for that core desire. And once you hit it, you realize, okay, this is my core desire. And there's another one there. There's one there. And you always go towards core desire. How do you know your core desire? It's love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment. If it makes you fulfilled, it's a core. It doesn't make you fulfilled. Doesn't sound fun. Doesn't sound something that you would be excited to do. It's not core desire. It's a desire which is masked by other beliefs and layers and meanings which uh, try to mask as desires. When in reality, your core desire is love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment. And here we segue into idea that core, at core of you, there's love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment. And to make the most efficient decisions, you will be following your heart. And your heart is always expressing your core desires, love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment, your true essence. However, it doesn't always get perceived as your true essence. It always feels like that as a feeling. But as soon as it becomes emotion, it stops feeling like that and starts feeling something else. For example, let's say excitement. It's certain energy flowing in the body, tingling and sensations and all these things. Excitement feels good. However, if there's a fear with ex there's a excitement and a fear, fear going on toward the topic seven may feel like anxiety. And as soon as you realize there's actually two things, feeling of excitement, emotion of uh, fear, uh, which is created by belief, there's born different feeling, different sensation body, and suddenly, oh, huh, there's, suddenly there's something else which doesn't feel like excitement. What is that? And you get curious, like, what is that? Yeah, what is that? And then you realize that, oh, that's excitement. What am I excited about? Well, there's this limiting belief here which says I'm unable to do that because I'm, there's some injury somewhere in my body and therefore I cannot do yoga. No, it's not true. Excitement because I'm excited because I can practice chair yoga. I can master my skill being on chair and doing yoga and all kinds of things. Maybe putting in Tony Robbins activation things and maybe a bit of Qigong uh, holding things and all basically create my own practice out of it and I know I went on a couple of tangents and a couple of ideas there's so much more I could be telling about line two and four six two and six six two profile but at the moment I believe with a good place good base for you 
to make your life magical and accelerate your dreams. Just one more thing. I just realized that one more thing you need to know is just came and got. Okay, that one more thing is going to be your next video. Next video about how to express your desires and how to live in more alignment with yourself in general if you maybe not even six to profile. So hope I trust you, enjoy this video, and if you did, press like button, subscribe to this channel to accelerate your dreams, comment, any questions, feedback. Uh, if you disagree with something, amazing. Let me know that if you completely disagree with everything I said, I would like to hear your uh, opinion. I, I can almost guarantee I will not agree with you. I still want to hear your uh, feedback because if you challenge my beliefs, they either become stronger or I realize that there's something in my beliefs that was not right. So I do welcome any and all comments. And if I ignore them, well, maybe I just don't have energy for that kind of uh, comment or I just too busy. I don't know. And you will probably also don't know if you don't get a response. But if you do get a response, I, uh, even if you don't get a response, I do appreciate your comment because you add life and value to this channel. So. That said, have it magical and live with passion and be thankfully present.